Now, when he was in his uh, late 80s, the Duke of Edinburgh approached Churchill and said, how do you want to be remembered? And Churchill said, well, something like the Rhodes Scholarships, but I want them to be available to ordinary men and women. So that's the idea was born uh, in the English-speaking nations for the creation of memorial to honour this great man. The Churchill Doorknock Appeal was organised by the Return Services League and um, an, an army, literally an army of 220,000 Australians took part in this door knock, which occurred between 7 and 9 p.m. on the 28th of February 1965. And they knocked on every door in Australia. Knock, knock, they went. Now I think that there are two elements of leadership which Churchill Fellows always have. The first one of these is imagination, and the second one of these is courage. And they're attributes that Churchill had as well. And what the Churchill Fellow seeks to do is to push the boundaries of their area of expertise. They get the chance to go and talk to the best in the world, and they do talk to the best in the world, because the Churchill Fellowship opens doors, and people want to talk to you as a Churchill Fellow. And then what happens is after your overseas voyage of discovery, uh, you come back to Australia, you write that fellowship report, and you share the results with the community. I like to think of a Churchill Fellowship as a life-changing experience. And what a, what a fellowship does, it really puts you on a new trajectory. It's a trajectory of, of influence, uh, leadership. They're the hallmarks of a Churchill Fellow. And um, you know, people should realise that a Churchill Fellowship is not just a notch on your belt, it's a life-defining, it's a life-changing moment uh, and you'll never be the same thereafter. I was lucky enough in 1994 to get a Churchill Fellowship, the Percy Baxter uh, Churchill Fellowship, to study ways to reduce cost and delay in um, the criminal justice system. I went to the United States, to Canada and the United Kingdom. Uh, not exactly exciting places because I had to go to cities where there was a, a really high crime rate so that I could see how they'd handled their criminal cases. Um, but it was the most wonderful opportunity to find out ways that we could improve our system back here. I, I'm one of the fortunate Churchill Fellows where I could see an immediate result. I came back and I must say that the fellowship in itself enabled me to achieve a lot because people respected the, the work that I'd done overseas and they respected the fact that I'd been a Churchill Fellow so it opened all the right doors for me to start working with all the right people in the criminal justice system and immediately we were able to put in place some changes. Look, I'm lucky enough in my career to see a lot of different awards and fellowships and scholarship opportunities. What I love about Churchill is that it's available to everybody. There are no bars or limitations in terms of what educational standard you've reached. There are no bars in terms of what your profession or occupation might be. If it's a project that will help Australians, and you're the right person to achieve good results, then you can be a successful Churchill Fellow. That's pretty good, I'm happy with that. My name is Dean Cox, I'm a 2005 Churchill Fellow, and my fellowship was awarded to investigate the roof slate industry by direct contact with companies that are importing natural roof slate to Australia. Um, I found out about the fellowship uh, was around at my wife's parents' house for Christmas and I was explaining to one of her cousins about how my um, passion, I suppose, would be the right word to find out with the things that I use every day at work, where they originated from and how they end up being in our lap or in my hands in Australia. So what we did, um, he said that you should apply for this thing called a Churchill Fellowship. And certainly I'd never heard of a fellowship, Churchill Fellowship before, never alone thinking that um, I would have an opportunity to receive one. You know, I'm a hammer and nail bag person, certainly not an academic. So my fellowship um, took me to the UK, to the USA, to Wales and to Spain. Um, the beauty of travelling to the various countries, um, they all ex extract slate uh, in a different way and that certainly opens up uh, my knowledge 
and um, allows me to um, express that knowledge to various industries. I'd certainly um, encourage anyone to apply for a Churchill Fellowship, but more so um, I think in my industry, um, tradespeople, it is a craft and um, we need to maintain that. So the opportunity is there to go overseas, gather the information and come back and um, disperse that information. So by doing that, um, you know, we're enhancing not only us, but we're enhancing our future as well. Well, my name is Joyce McGrath, and I was born in 1925 in uh, Redcliffs in country, Victoria. So I started off in the lending library at the State Library, and I was there for 10 years before I knew that there was <laughs> an art library upstairs. I was also learning painting. It must have been 1965. Somebody came to the door of our house in Oakley where I lived at the time and asked for money for Churchill fellowships and I gave them two shillings. Because <laughs> I, I used to give two shillings to anybody who came to the door. But I didn't know anything about it. And I didn't know anything about it again until I was working in the library and, and, and I'd been moved up to the art library upstairs and I read in the newspapers about uh, Macmillan who in the police force getting a Churchill Fellowship and so I thought it answered my needs exactly so <laughs> I applied. You know, it made, made it possible to provide a service at the State Library that's you know, still developing. That uh, archive of Australian art that I set up is now, you know, the most important in Australia. People write books using, using the material that's in there and I keep sending them stuff and they have permanent volunteers filing new material into it all the time. My name is Marita Chang. I was awarded a Church of Fellowship in 2011. I run a robotics company. We make telepresence robotics with robotic arms attached. I've been working on robotic arms for people with limited upper limb mobility, so you attach it to the side of someone's wheelchair and it can be used to get someone a drink or pick things up off the ground, open doors. My fellowship was awarded for my work with RoboGals Global, getting girls interested in engineering, technology, careers and tertiary studies. And so I went to uh, the UK, Germany, US and Jamaica uh, to visit organisations that were at the cutting edge of this field see what they were doing and learn from them. So Robo Girls Global goes out to schools with Lego robots and teaches girls how to build and program them to show them that engineering is really fun. So before I went on this fellowship, Robo Girls had taught less than 3,000 girls our robotics workshop. And after the fellowship and now, we've taught over 40,000. The Winston Churchill Fellowship has changed my work in giving me a, a kickstart in my career as an academic and in also establishing a long-term collaboration between us here at RMIT University and uh, NUS National University of Singapore. The impact of my fellowship, uh, although it's not immediate, I envision in many years to come that people will have uh, portable uh, devices that they can use it to d deliver a peptide for osteoporosis patients or other diseases or vaccination instead of using needles um, for treatment. My Churchill Fellowship was awarded for going and studying new writing practices in the USA, Ireland, Germany and the UK. My time as a Churchill Fellow and my, and my trip to all the different countries changed my practice because it gave me, first of all, it taught me actual practical things in writing with the different directors and stuff that I spent time with. I learned a lot about my own practice. And also I learned about what was different about new writing overseas and, and about what we are sort of lacking, what we might be lacking in Australia and also points where we excel. So I was able to kind of come back with all this knowledge about my own writing, but also about, about new writing in general around different places in the world and kind of bring that back into the community in Australia. For me, as a playwright, my whole world, all my friends, my community uh, is all with people in the theatre, which is wonderful. But through the Churchill Fellowship, I've met all these other people. And so I've continued going to the dinners and 
going to the sort of different gatherings and it's been now I know detectives I know scientists I know beekeepers and for me as a writer that's amazing to kind of have access to all these different characters but I think it's so great to kind of get get to meet all these people in these different professions who are equally passionate about what they're doing you sort of feel like you get a whole new experience of the world so I'd encourage anyone who becomes a Churchill Fellow to, to stay really involved with, with the trust. I would say to anyone who's thinking of applying to do a Churchill Fellowship, to go for it and not to kind of think of something that you think is worthy, but actually to go with something that you are passionate about. Because always in life, the stuff that you're passionate about is the stuff that you're gonna really be able to kind of make better and to communicate with. And so I'd say, Go, go overseas and find out about the things that you're really wondering about and then bring that back to Australia because if you care about it, then chances are other people will care about it too.